Hey, what's up guys? It's Theo from Theo Concept and today I'm going to show you how to create this logo animation by T-Bag Creations in Adobe Photoshop. So, let's just get started. Welcome to Fino Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Okay, so first of all, we open up our application. I've already created, um, or I should say, recreated this logo and have separated all of them into different layers. So you can see we have the, I'm zooming, we have the text layer right over here. We have the horizontal shape. We have the vertical one, we have the diagonal. Now, the first thing we are going to do is go to window and make sure that timeline is checked. So I'll quickly check that. And you can see we have the timeline over here. Now I'm going to align all of this together. So this is going to be um, more or less like five seconds. You can see I can increase the number of frames by clicking on this icon right here. So I'm going to reduce all of these to um, about two seconds because I don't want it to be too slow. So I'll quickly select everything, highlight them, and I'll use this scissor icon right here to split the layers. So once I've done that, I'll just click on all those parts I don't need. So holding down control, I'll just be clicking on them and I'll press the delete key on my keyboard or just click on the delete layer icon right here this is what we have so let's begin with our animation now we are going to start with the vertical layer which is this one and we are going to create a layer mask for that so to create a layer mask i'll just be using the rectangular marquee tool which is right here and i'll quickly create a selection around it it doesn't have to be perfect just make sure that the selection is covering everything so something like this should be okay and I'll create a layer mask for this particular shape. So I'll click on the new layer mask icon right here. So this is what we are having. And I'm going to invert that layer mask. So using Ctrl I, I'll invert that selection. Now you can see that that selection vanishes. That's because we've inverted the layer mask. And I'll do the same thing for the diagonal. So I'll make sure the diagonal layer is selected. Now because the diagonal shape is inclined at an angle, Instead of using the rectangular marquee tool, I'll be using the pen tool. So I'll quickly grab the pen tool and I'll create a similar shape. So I'll just click um, at any of the corners like so. And I'll just bring everything back. So this is what I have. I'll right click, I'll go to make selection and I'll click on OK. Now I have my selection and I'll create a layer mask from that. So just like the first one, we'll invert by hitting Ctrl I. Now I'll go back to the horizontal, I'll quickly grab the rectangular marquee tool which is right here and I'll create a similar shape like so. I just have to make sure it covers and I'll create a layer mask for that and again Control i so it vanishes. Now what I'm going to do is actually remove the linking icon right here so this is going to unlink the layer mask to the shape itself. So right now you can see if I grab my move tool, the shape is standing on its own and the layer mask is standing on its own. So if I move the layer mask, you can see that we have this effect. The same way if I try to move the shape, so if I click on the shape, the shape is standing on its own like so. This is what we have. But if you don't have that checked, anytime you move it, it will be moving both the layer mask and the layer itself. This is not what we want. So let's start animating. I'll quickly uncheck that and I'll start with the vertical. So I'll go to the timeline right here and I'll click on this little arrow right here. Now we want to animate the layer max itself, not the shape. So I'll quickly start from a zero mark and I'll create a keyframe for the layer max position which is right here. So I'll quickly check on that. Now make sure this is a shape and not a rasterized image or a flattened image so since it is a shape we have all of these options and I'll move 15 frames right here and I want to animate so let's quickly make sure this is a little bit bigger so we can see 
I'll make sure that the layer mask is selected, not the layer itself. So you can see this is the shape which is currently selected. I'll make sure that the layer mask is selected. And I'll quickly and move the layer mask. So I'll be moving this layer mask downwards. So holding down Control and Shift so that I get a perfect alignment. I'll quickly bring this down over this portion. Then once I'm done, I'll leave it. You can see that this diamond is created because we just moved the position of the layer mask and it's going to automatically create for us. Now once this is done, I'll quickly move to the other one which is the diagonal. Again, I'll click on this little arrow here. I'll create a layer mask position keyframe. Then I'll move again 15 seconds. So, sorry, not 15 seconds, 15 frames. So right over here, then I will quickly make sure that the layer mask is selected and I'll move the layer mask over to some portion. So like so, um, it's okay. So if we quickly move through the timeline, you can see that we already having that effect. So this will come in, then the diagonal will also follow. Now from the logo animation, they don't follow exactly after one has ended. So I'll quickly select all of these keyframes and I'll move it slightly to the beginning so that once one is ending, the other is also starting. So let's do that for the next one, which will be the horizontal. You click on this arrow, you create a layer mask position keyframe. Then you move over to about 15 frames which should be somewhere around here then we'll quickly move that layer mask so again i'll make sure that the layer is not selected is the layer mask we are animating so i'll quickly hold down ctrl and shift or just shift and you move the layer mask over to one side so basically we are already having that effect this will come in that will come in and that will come in again i'll quickly make sure that um, I select all these keyframes and I bring it slightly to this edge so that it animates a little bit faster. Okay, now for the last part, which is the text itself. From the logo animation, there's a blur effect before the text comes in. Now, the text doesn't show until right around this area when the horizontal layer has already been animated. So, I'll quickly cut that portion out i'll delete this one because i don't need it so from here to about two seconds i want to animate the blur effect now to do this i'll quickly move over to about five frames which is right around here and i'll quickly cut that part also now you can also bring this over to this portion so that um, you have just the text aligned in one video group so um i'll quickly make sure that this is a blurred image so that it moves towards the original image at the latter point now to create a blur effect for this we have to make sure that the text layer is rasterized what i mean by rasterization is we have to convert it into pixel so you right click and you click on rasterize type now i'll quickly go to filter and I'm going to be using the blur effect. Now the blur effect is currently unavailable because my timeline pointer is not on the layer. So I quickly bring it onto the layer so that that layer selected is on the timeline. Now if I go back to filter, you can see that the blur effect is showing now. So I quickly um, click on Gaussian blur and I'll set it to about 5. Now we have the effect, so I think 5 is okay. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that this is selected and I'll go to video group one and I'll click on that little arrow right here. Now, again, if you make sure that this is selected and your keyframe is here, video group one is only going to show you the information for the text itself, not the rasterized star. So I'll quickly bring the timeline pointer here. And I'll make sure I click on that two times to bring up the options for this one. Now I want to create an opacity change from um, one side to the other. So I'll quickly start from the beginning, which is right around here. I'll make sure I create an opacity and I'll change the opacity to about 0%. So from the beginning, there's nothing showing. 
then when i get to the end which is somewhere around here i'll create another keyframe and i'll increase that opacity sorry and i'll increase that opacity to 100 so i'll quickly delete the first keyframe i created so you can see that from the beginning it just slides in get to 100 then the text actually shows so basically that is how to create this in adobe photoshop so thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like to watch more of our videos don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends but if you have any questions be sure to leave it in the comment below or if you like this video make sure you comment below whether you liked it or not it helps us a lot so thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one